Redskins quarterback Joe Theismann is approaching many of the club passing records held by Sonny Jergensen. Frequently when he goes to the air, he finds Art Muff, the former Syracuse All-American, who's caught 54 passes and six of them all the way for touchdowns. However, he's not the only receiver, and when the former Notre Dame quarterback Joe Theismann does back, sometimes he finds Virgil C., the young man out of Troy State, who's caught 25 and two of them for touchdowns, Art Muff and Virgil C. on the receiving end for the Redskins. On the other hand, the Los Angeles Rams lead the NFC in pass defense. Mark Kowski of the Atlanta Falcons on Monday night found that out when Nolan Cromwell, the veteran free safety, picked one off and returned it. However, Cromwell is not the only man in that secondary who is apt to pick them off. On the corner, there's a fellow named Rod Perry. So Bartkowski is intercepted there by Perry this afternoon. The Washington Redskins and the Los Angeles Rams. CBS Sports presents the best of the National Football League. The National Football Conference. Today, the Washington Redskins versus the Los Angeles Rams. At Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California, the sun is shining. It's slightly overcast. The temperature is 70 degrees. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with George Allen here at Anaheim. George, you were head coach of both these teams. Now, how about some observations? First, what kind of season have the Redskins had? Well, right now, the Redskins are playing as good a brand of football, Lindsey, as anybody in the NFC. They started out slowly because they didn't have a set offense and some lineup changes. Once they settled on two tight ends and one remaining back, they can whip anybody. Well, the Los Angeles Rams are not in the playoffs. That's a change for them. What kind of a year have they had? Well, I think the big thing here is that you can't lose to teams you should whip. The Rams lost two games to the Saints. The Saints are not a good football team. If the Rams had won just one of those ball games, they'd still be alive for the playoffs. One final question about the Washington Redskins, George. The question is this afternoon, will they finish the season seven and nine or eight and eight? There's a world of difference. Well, as a, as a coach, uh, you'd like to finish eight and eight, not seven and nine. The other thing that's probably going to happen today, the Redskins defense is going to have to stop the bombs of Pastorini, stop the deep pass, and stop Wendell Tyler on the ground. Los Angeles Rams along the sideline and the Washington Redskins have won the toss and they will be receiving the kickoff. It'll be Frank Carell putting it up Pastorini exercising along the sideline in the sunshine of Anaheim, California. Washington Redskins are still in their final huddle with their coach Joe Gibbs. They come in with a record of seven wins, eight losses for the year. The Los Angeles Rams come in five wins, nine losses. Corral now coming out. Gets the ball from the official. Mike Nelms has gone back deep. Well, you know, Lindsay, I think the Redskins offense is playing better football than the Rams offense. And that could be a difference today. Mike Nelms needs 156 yards to set an NFL season record for combined kick return yardage. He's a threat every time he gets the football. That on the kicking tee there on the 35-yard line now by Corral, who does the punting and the kicking off. Seems to be sufficient the exercise, and there is the whistle of referee Bob Frederick. Ball is in the air. Nelms has called for it, and he's got it to the six-yard line. Nelms to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, 25. Nelms to the 30, 35 and falls forward to the 40-yard line. Fine return for the Washington Redskins here this afternoon. We'll have Joe Theismann at quarterback, Washington and Riggins, the running back that time. There'll be a one-back off that many times. C and Muck, the wide receivers. John Warren is the tight end, and there's the offensive line for the Washington Redskins. It's done an excellent job this year. Here they come first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Joe Washington, the lone setback. Play action, Seismund. That's his complete. Taken by Joe Washington. And he goes out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Leroy Irvin, the cornerback. 
pulled him out of bounds. There's the defensive front four. Joe Osmond completing the pass. Well, Joe Washington is the key to the Redskins offense. Running and passing. Now here's a screen pass. Play action screen pass. Tackled by Irwin, number 47. He was in a rotation coverage that put him right up there. Second down, three yards to go. Washington's got the first and 10, 45 at the 40-yard line. First and 10, Washington in Ram territory. Nolan Cromwell made the tackle. Now the defense, there's the front four. Youngblood, Fanning, Dawson Jones, Jack Youngblood. Yeah, that's a good matchup. George Stark versus Jack Youngblood. Carl Ecker in, in the middle there. And there's the deep four. First down, 10 yards to go. Mark in motion across. Washington drives outside left. Bounces off and goes out of bounds near the 37-yard line. It was Carl Eckern who bounced him out over there. Well, you know, Lindsay, I said the Redskin offense has been quite potent late in the year, and they're playing a lot better football than the Ram offense, and that could be the difference in this ball game. Now, they had good field position on that kickoff return. Now they're in scoring territory in the first series of the ball game. In a game like this, the team that scores first or that dominates that first quarter can win it. You're playing out the schedule. It's a character game on both sides. Second and seven at the 37, and now Rick Walker comes out. Terry Metcalf into the wide receiver, John Riggins. Big John is really? the 44 at the setback. Riggins has got the football, and he powers inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Jack Youngblood made the tackle again at three, makes it third down and four yards to go. Washington Redskins took the opening kickoff. You see Riggins going off the field as Joe Washington comes back on. Ricky Thompson is also coming in there to wide receiver, and Don Warren has gone up. This is the Ram defense that leads the NFC in pass defense, as they showed on Monday night against the Atlanta Falcons. Go, 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 Dropping back to take a look. Tries to scam a lot, but he's got somebody hanging on at the 32-yard line, and it's big Cody Joe. Well, they had everybody covered, and uh, Joe did the right thing. He scrambled to try to get the first down. Now it's fourth and about two. Triple tied in now. Warren, Walker, Reba. They're going to go for it. Nothing to lose. Fourth and two on the 32. It's important to both these ball clubs to finish on a high note. Riggins on Ricky Platt. In the half on Mason Platt ahead of Riggins. Monk in motion across. There's Riggins. He's got it. They keep the drive alive, and he's still alive. Big John inside the 20-yard line and out of bounds. We are Irvin and Johnny Johnson. Well, the tackle. This shows uh, John Riggins' power, but it also shows sloppy tackling. Fourth and two, motion changes the strength. It's a lead play. Now watch Riggins lower the boom. Now Eckert did not lock his arms. 47 Irwin did not lock his arms. They just hit him to try to knock him down. You're not going to knock a 235-pound fullback like John Riggins down. You have to tackle him. First and 10 now. Redskins at the Rams, 19-yard line. Knock in motion across. Heisman, play action. Never had a chance. It was Cody Joe. Well, <coughs> Joe didn't even have a chance to set up like that. Cody Jones beat the blocker from the outside. Big sack. Now, we talked about the Rams' pass defense. However, the Rams are 13th on running defense, and that's unusual. That's something that I never had uh, as a team that was last on running defense. You stop the run, and you stop the pass both. Second and 18, that's the 27. Out of the way now, Washington. 2015, turns it on to the 10 to the five-yard line. Ball gets away, but he was down. Possession retained by the Redskins and Washington first and goal at the five-yard line. They, they got a break on that. They got a quick whistle. And here's what we talked about. We just talked about the Rams being last on running defense. Here's a trap. 
big hole. Drive a truck through there. Almost scored on it. Good, good play and a good call when they were expecting a, a pass. He fumbled, but the whistle was blown. Virgil C got on the football just in case, but it had been blown dead, so it's first down goal to go at the five-yard line. Both running back in there now. Washington out right Got one yard. Second down and goal at the four-yard line. Rod Perry made the tackle with Carl Eckern. Well, you know, Riggins is a good pick-a-hole runner. He tried to cut back there, but the offside pursuit cut him off. Riggins has enough speed to go outside down here. They can flip the ball to him. Flip the ball too many can run wide. Joe Gibbs, the head coach of the Washington Redskins, trying to come off here with a victory this afternoon that would give him a 500 season. This is Washington's 10th play in this drive. They took the opening kickoff, and they've driven it downfield. It's second down and goal to go at the four-yard line. Washington in the right set. Scott in the right set. Thank you, Mike. Into the end zone. Mop. No, no. He's on the end line. He's on the end line incomplete. Couldn't get him down. Art Mop trying to get his feet down. Well, he was wide open. He had the defender beaten. The ball was thrown a little bit to the outside. He had to adjust. Here it is again. Monk has a touchdown. Let's see if his feet are in or out. Hard to tell. Here it is. There's another angle. The left foot was out. The right foot in, the left foot out. Good call. Third down goal to go at the four-yard line. Washington in left that. Touchdown, Washington. Well, go Washington. Washington beat Jim Youngblood. It was one-on-one. -on -one. Washington made a move on, on Youngblood and broke inside of him. It, here it is. Here's a replay from the end zone. Joe Theismann setting up. Now watch Washington come underneath. See Youngblood on the ground, Jim Youngblood on the ground. That's tough coverage. Very difficult coverage for one linebacker especially an outside linebacker to, to stop the back like Joe Washington. Theismann holding for Mark Mosley. It's up. And it is Johnson who got good. Well, they fumbled the snap. Looked like it was a low snap, and uh, Theismann fumbled the snap. So it's 6 nothing as they come back up the field. Here it is. Tempted conversion is no good, and now the Washington Redskins have taken an early 6 nothing lead over the Los Angeles Rams. Eight of those 11 players were rushing. Well, the Redskins lead it 6 nothing. Well, I, I, I think that the Redskins can run on the Rams' defense. We talked about that. They made, made very good yardage. Now, that missed extra point could be a big play. Drew Hill is center deep now. It mostly kicks it off. Hill is retreating, and he is at the 9-yard line to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. 25 and he is stopped up there at about the 27 yard line by Bob Reba. Now Dan Pastorini is the quarterback and he's got Tylan Gouman at the running backs and he's got Denard and Waddy as wide receivers. His tight end is Walt Arnold and there's the offensive line. Rich Stahl in there at center. What a career. Retiring after today's ball game, he's playing his 176 straight game today. Well, I'm not sure he's going to retire. That's what he's. <laughs> a lot of these guys said they're going to retire now, but. They're going to retire later. Yeah, next July. Tyler to the 30 yard line. Here's the Washington Redskins defensive alignment now. There's the four big day butts in their tackle. Tough to run against butts. Manley, a rookie, having a good year. Took over after about the third game. There's the line. Yeah, there. now 54 is going to be tested today. Peter Cronin. Olkowitz is out with an injury. He's on injured reserve. And there are the deep men. And they're going to be tested deep because Pastorini's a bomber. Second and six down to 31. Tyler. Where's the corner? Well, it's over there amongst the people somewhere. Coleman and Peters ran him out, forced him out. You know, on, on Rich Stahl, when we drafted him in 19... 70 in an eighth round because of a bad knee he came in as a guard or possibly a defensive end he was limping I said Rich take this football and learn to be a center 
that's your best chance. And we put him on injured reserve, and it turned out to be a pretty good decision for him. I would say it did. He's had a great career there. Third down, six yards to go. Mascarini. Truman incomplete. Pastorini had all time to throw because the Redskins read the play. Then he threw the ball so hard it went right through uh, Gooman's hands. Gooman should have had it. So on fourth down, the punting unit is coming on now. Mike Nelms is dropping back for Washington. Frank Corral does the punting and the placement kicking. <laughs> Lindsay, these teams match up very well in the kicking game. Redskins have Nelms, Mike Nelms, the Rams have Leroy Irwin. That's the exciting part of the football game. The return team. Ralph boots it and Nels moves over. Seldom calls for a fair catch and doesn't call for one there. He's at the 20. And he's struggling to the 24-yard line. Yep. 45-yard kick return, two yards by Mike Nelms. The Redskins lead by a score of 6-0, and they have the ball. Washington Redskins have the ball first and ten at the 24. Washington the long setback. Washington with the football. He got two. Moved it out to the 26 yard line. All right, take a look at some scores now. They're very indicative. And a final score, the Jets have defeated yeah. Green Bay 28 to 3. The Jets are a wild card team. Yeah, and that, that puts the Giants in and Green Bay out. It does, and we have the Giants, the Jets, and Buffalo, three teams in New York State in the playoffs. Here's the final. Both those teams were out of it, but that gives Minnesota a losing season, 7-9. Who would have thought that? Second down, eight yards to go at the 26. Washington the setback. Draw play, Washington. Out of bounds at the 32-3. And penalty marker. There's a marker on the play. But it in advance of the 32-yard line. Bob Frederick, the referee. Well, Jim Youngblood didn't contain that. Lindsay. When you play against a back like Washington, you have to stay in your lane and contain him. No foul, defense. First and a foul against the Los Angeles Rams. Called there by the line judge, Bob Beach. Frederick is marking it off. Washington made that play at his own. He bounced outside. The linebacker didn't contain him. So it is a first and ten now. Ball is in advance to the 47-yard line. Personal foul, number 47 on the defense. Leroy first down. Evans. Here's a replay now. 47, Irwin has him, and now he bounces him way out of bounds, five yards out of bounds. Good call. Mark in motion. John Riggins to step back, and Riggins has the ball. Big shot. Wow. First and ten. To the 36. Lindsay, a good example of Riggins running outside and sloppy tackling on the defense and why the Rams are 13th on rushing defense. Brownwell and Eckern finally dragged him down, but not before Big John had moved it on for the first and 10 at the 36-yard line. Here it is. Arm tackling. Two men on him. He's still dragging him for five, six, seven yards. To this point, George, the Redskins have been a little more enthusiastic about this than the Rams have. They have, Lindsay, much more emotion. They can still the setback. That's what you have to have. Second. Now there's a good hit. You hear it all the way up here. Okay, let's look at some more scores now. This is the day when they mean so much with some playoff spots to be decided starting in play today. Here's the final. Well, the Eagles, 38, St. Louis, nothing. And the first game, they scored 52 points on them. The Eagles are coming along pretty good right now. They're in the playoffs. They can still beat anybody. And here's another big final now. Tampa Bay, 20, yeah. Detroit, 17. Tampa Bay wins the Central Division in that The first game. loss for the Detroit Lions at home. Exactly right. Okay, the Reds get the ball now. Seisman, Washington at the 29. That tackle on, on Riggins, the, the previous play is the way you tackle a big back like that. You hit him low. If you hit a big back high like Riggins, Lindsay, he'll drag you for four or five yards. You hit him 
below the knees and drop them. Okay, look at this one. The Chicago Bears have defeated, or rather, in the fourth quarter, are leading Denver 35-24. The game is still in progress. Well, that, if Denver loses that, and then San Diego wins, beats he, Oakland on Monday night. Monday night, they win the division. You're right. Dodgman. Well, he looked for Mark. Couldn't find his bad deal running. He hits the deck. He's a great scrambler at Notre Dame. It's at the 26-yard line. Jim Youngblood from his linebacker spot made the tackle. Well, the Rams' best pass rusher is, 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 is Jack Jack Youngblood. Now, now here's C against Perry. And all the while, Thysman is looking right. for Art Mock. And Thysman's fighting for his life also and doesn't see him, doesn't see C. <laughs> say C, C. What I started to say is the Redskins match up well. George Stark against Jack Youngblood. Baltimore 23, New England 14. You heard me, Mark, if Allen plays in New England? Yeah. All right, Mark in motion. John Riggins. Now there. Check that. Now there's another example. Jack Youngblood tripped him up around the ankle. That's, that's where you tackle a big, strong running back like John Riggins. Hit him low. Don't hit him high. If you possibly can. And so, it'll be first and ten on the 29-yard line. And the Washington Redskins are still leading in the ball game by a score of six to nothing. <laughs> we have five minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Lindsey Theismann had a first down there, but he slid too soon. Back a little early, first and ten at the 29. Pastorini throws a screen right. Good out to the 32-yard line, again, a three on the play. He'll make it second down to seven. Pete Cronin, middle linebacker, made the tackle. Cronin read that pretty well. Watch 54. We can see him. He's with him all the way. Good catch. No, no chance for Grumman. Brought him down from behind. Good play by Cronin. Second down play coming now. Grumman and Tyler are the setback. Picks his way up to the 37-yard line. Murphy and Cronin made the tackle. You know, the Redskins' rushing defense is 12th in the division, so we've got the, the two bottom rushing defenses here today. The Rams are trying to run the football first and pass the second. And that's, that's the thing to do. Now, Wendell Tyler matches up pretty well with Joe Washington. Third down and two yards to go at the 37. Tyler has tied the Ram record for touchdowns. One more, and the record is his alone. He's explosive. He's likely to go at any time. Penalty much is at the line of scrimmage. Little ballet over here, over there. Well, there it gets back. Pastor, Pastor Rini, uh, changed his cadence put a lot of uh, voice inflection into his voice and uh, the Redskins jumped offside. Bob Frederick and his crew. Defensive encroachment number 69. Perry Brooks. Well, Perry rushes the passer. He gets well off ahead of the ball sometimes or, or right with the ball and you're going to do that. I'd rather see a, uh, a defensive lineman on the defense, number 69. Being offside First once down. in a while and uh, sitting back waiting for something to happen. Encroachment is a defensive and 35-cent word for offside. It is now 1st and 10 at the 42-yard line. Pastorini. Yeah, there it is. Pulled down near the 50-yard line by Mike Gumman. Not enough for the first down. It'll be second and two. Monty Coleman, linebacker, made the stop. Well, Pastorini has a powerful arm, and on that last play, he threw the ball real hard, and Gooman made a good catch. Billy Watt is in the wide right, Justin Denard in the wide left. Wendell Collar is in the slot left, Denard in motion back toward the inside. Give it instead to Gooman, the Penn Stater. And he's got the first and ten as he moves it to the 44-yard line before Pete Cronin, middle linebacker, made the stop. Now,
This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcaster or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Los Angeles Rams and the National Football League is prohibited. Tyler. Anytime he breaks to the outside like that, wow. as a probability. Mark Murphy made the tackle. Well, he's a, he's a big play guy. He can run inside or outside. And the Rams offense are, are testing the Redskins run defense. They know that Okowitz is out. They want to put the pressure on Cronin, number 50, for as much as they can. Tyler almost broke that. Good blocking at the point of attack. Second down and a yard to go. Ty Gilman. No gain. Perry Brooks was there. Third and one. Well, I think Perry Brooks can develop into an outstanding lineman because on that particular play, he played pass. He came off the ball like a shot and still stopped the run. George, what can a coach do on a final day like this, like the Rams? Now, they're out of the race. They're not going to be in the playoffs. They, they, they've broken a the string of being in there. What yeah. can a coach do to get his team up? Well, you you're appeal to their pride. You don't want to lose the last game. It's a long winter. You've had a disappointing season. Tyler has got the first, and he's at the 28-yard line. Tony Peters brought him down. Leadership and character mean a lot in these last ball games, especially when you're playing out the schedule like both these teams are. Now, there was an example of Tyler running on a fast trap up the gut. He hits the hole real quickly. Ball is spotted at the 29, first and 10. We have exactly one minute remaining to be played in the first quarter. Body in motion back to the inside. Toscarini has the ball. Goes wide. And uh-oh. Uh-oh. Marcus Brown right down the goal line. It was Jerry White covering Billy Waddy. Yeah. Waddy had him beaten. Waddy was open. That's the bomb we're talking about. But Jerry White tripped him. Accidentally tripped him. And that's the same thing that happened to Atlanta Monday night here. Pass interference on the defense, number 45. Jerry Swine. It'll be a first yeah. down and goal from the one-yard line. Here, here's the replay. See if we can see the trip. Their feet caught right in the goal line, right in the one-yard line. Triple tight in alignment. Arnold, Gilbert, and Bain in this alignment for the round. Ruben and Tyler are the setback. Come on, he's the guy. Doesn't get it. Terry Brooks again. And Dave Butts and Pete Cronin, all right there. Well, Butts, with Butts playing the run and Brooks playing the pass, you got a good combination there. Now, Butts has also developed his pass rushing ability, so they got two pretty good eye men there, inside men. Second and goal at the one. Clock is running with exactly 30 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Ruben in the left, set Tyler in the right. Tyler. Right to the goal line, but pushed back. He didn't get that touchdown that would give him the Ram record. Marty Coleman was the defender. Clock is running. Third down and goal to go. It's inside the one-yard line. And so... Time is running out. Two seconds, one second, and there he is. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Washington six in the round, nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota, who invites you to see the completely redesigned 1982 Celica Supra at your local Toyota dealer. Oh, what a feeling to drive a Toyota. And by the Miller Brewing Company, brewers of Miller Highlight. If you've got the time, we've got the beer. As we start the second quarter, this is Lindsey Nelson with George Allen and Anaheim, Washington leading Los Angeles 6-0, but the Rams have the ball third down, goal to go inside the one-yard line. Here's where the defense can sometimes be fooled by play action. A 
Walsh's type of pattern to either tight end. Triple tight on the line, the mouth of the round. Tyler on the right side, Gooman on the left. Gooman. Touchdown. Gooman to Penn State. Here, second down. Everybody pinched, charging inside. Easy score. So now it's a 6-6 six, tie six on a conversion attempt coming in Frank. There it is. Top. Everybody in the gap. You see that? Everybody's out flank, charging low, separating. No containment. Easy score. Here's a ground level shot. Real good blocking at the point of attack. Now that play was set up by something they saw on film. You wouldn't you wouldn't normally run that if you hadn't scouted them and checked them out on film and know what defense they were in. Nolan Cromwell holding the boot. My corral is good. And the lead goes to the Los Angeles Rams. They have taken a one-point lead here early in the second quarter as they're outfought by a score of 7 to 6, 14 minutes, 57 seconds left in the first half. Frank Carell will kick off now. That drive taking 10 plays. Five minutes, 25 seconds he left. Gooman with a one-yard run. Carell's boot was his 87th consecutive point after touchdown. Nelms is center deep. Giacquinto is over there, but Nelms runs him off. He takes it at the 4 to the 5 to the 10 to the 15, 20. Hurdles up to the 25 and gets out past the 30-yard line. Mike Nelms on the return. Stopped by Bob Cobb. <laughs> you know, Lindsay, uh, when I had Frank Corral, uh, the one thing I told him as a rookie, don't worry about the long field goals. Just make the ones you should make. Make the ones that that count. And he's done that for the most part as a as a Ram. He's developing an all-around kicker. Very valuable player. As they're running as well. Joe Washington, the lone setback. First and 10 at the 30-yard line. Motion across to the tight end. Seisman with the ball. Going long. And Mark got it. Irvin yeah. hanging on. Well, a blow in coverage there. Out of bounds, out of about the eight-yard line, perhaps the seven. Leroy Irvin was beat, beaten. Either that or, or he expected to have some help deep. Now, here's Irwin up. There he is, trying to jam Monk. Monk goes inside of him. Now, Irwin's looking at his heel, still looking back. No help deep. He either expected some help deep or he blew the coverage. They missed Pat Thomas on that left corner. First and goal at the six yard line, 63 yarder. Washington is the lone setback. Right in the cross. Nice one. Washington. One yard line. Well, Goff on the tackle. With Washington as the remaining back, your middle linebacker has to stay at home. In that time, Decker almost ran himself out of there. Washington almost scored. He's on a one, one foot line. John Reagans and Ricky Platt come in now. Inches away from the goal line with a second down play coming. John Warren and Rick Walker double tied in. Platt's in the right set. Reagans in the left set. Great defense by the Rams. They met Riggins head, head on. They had the right call against the fullback slant. Good penetration. They got across. And see if we can see who that is and met him in the backfield. Ivory? Looked Sully. like Ivory Sully, 37. And even that, Riggins kept kept driving. He was hit for two-yard loss, and he almost scored. Third and goal. They had a Riggins in the air for me. Riggins. Touchdown. Well, <laughs> Riggins is like a, a runaway ball in there when he takes off. He starts fast for a big man. Now watch him. There's no fourth step. Lead play. He just lowers the boom. Scores. Here it is from ground level. Good sound football. Man for man blocking. Nobody pulling. Scores easily. 
Seismic in the hole now for Mark Mosley. It's up and it's good this time. And so the Washington Redskins, who was trailing by a point of seven downfield and recaptured the lead, Washington 13, Los Angeles 7. The drive didn't take long to put Washington back out in front. Well, they got 63 yards, Lindsay, on that one play. That helps, doesn't it? Yeah. It's going to be Mark Mosley now kicking it off from the 35-yard line. Drew Hill is center deep. A line there on the 10-yard line. Bob Frederick's whistle. Driving Hill back to the two-yard line. He's at the 5, 10, 15. Head down and drives out to the 20-yard line. They'll start first and 10. And the tackle was made by Curtis Jordan. Let's check out some scores now. Here's one. San Francisco 21, New Orleans 17, the final. Gives San Francisco the home field advantage, and that's so important. All the way up to the championship game if they make it that far. Big disappointment this year in the, in the Falcons. And they started so well. Seattle 7, Cleveland nothing in the first quarter. Cleveland is disappointing yeah. you. Lo losing season. First and 10 at the 20 now. Now they pass Serini as the quarterback. Ruman is the setback. Truman, nothing, no okay. game. Second and 10 at the 20-yard line. Pete Cohn and Matt Mendenhall made the tackle. You know, when you play against a quarterback like Pastorini, you really have to give your deep backs plenty of work throwing, covering the long bomb, the long pass. If he lays that ball up so well, it's difficult to defense it. And what, what happens, you get a penalty. The way the rules are now, any contact downfield are usually called on the defense. Ruben and Tyler are the setbacks even up. Pastorini has the ball. Going long, the Wadi incomplete covering Jarris White. Well, there it is right there. George, let me ask you something about San Francisco. We're talking yeah. about them. They had a great comeback here, Cinderella here. What did they do right? I think the, the big thing was three things. They traded to Burke. Burke had been the record quarterback, right? And let Montana know. You're going to be the quarterback. We believe in you. And Montana responded. Respond. Then they signed Jack Reynolds as a free agent from the Rams. And he's a leader, helped, helped their defense. And then they made the trade for Dean. And, and Dean's the pass rusher. And he helped that young secondary by putting pressure on the quarterback. And it all came together. Third down play now. Waddy and Drew Hill are in as wide receivers, along with Preston Denard. Three wide receivers in the game. For Pastorini dropping back to look for White. Up the middle, Waddy, and incomplete. Deflected by Lamar Perry. Well, that could have been intercepted. He he was well covered. He threw that ball up into a crowd. Here it is. Third down. He has time to throw. Good protection. Now watch this. Threw it high and right into the crowd. Two receivers were, were, were together in the same area. Frank Corral is back to do the punting. He's the placement kicker and the punter. Mike Nelms has dropped back deep to receive it. He's the man who disdains the fair catch. Crowd kick, high, long, spiling, driving Nelms back. He is at the 27-yard line. 30, breaks one, 35. Finally dragged down. It was Joe Harris who made the tackle. A 52-yard punt returns six yards. So now it'll be taken over first and 10 at the 32-yard line. There's Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator of the Redskins. He played for me in Chicago when we won the World Championship. Then I made a trade for him with the Rams, and then brought him to the Redskins. He's doing a heck of a job. He's one of the all-time strong safety. On two lanes, first and ten at the 32-yard line. Now they draw here. John Riggins trying to get to the outside. Oh, my. You see how nifty Riggins is? And Nolan Carmel knows yeah. how nifty he is. And he gave Nolan Carmel a forearm. See, when you get a big back like Riggins, you think he's just a, a plow horse. Now watch him on this play. He's supposed to go inside, but he bounces outside. There's a straight arm. There's another straight arm. Doesn't get him down. Now look at him give the right forearm to Nolan Cromwell. You don't see an awful lot of straight arms in no, football. You don't. It's, it's almost a forgotten art. That was a real good shot of one. Second down, 11 yards, towards the 31. 
Hard knock in motion across. Bassman has the ball. That is out of bounds by Virgil C. Rod well, Perry there. Yeah, well, Perry, 49, Rod Perry. A real fine defensive back. Watch running right with him has put has position on him, and what C did was knock the ball down so Perry could intercept it. That is C coming off the field. From Troy State, 5'8", 170 pounders. Good play by C. Third and 11 at the 31-yard line. If you can't get it, don't let the defense get it. Nick Quinto is in there now. Long set back for Washington. The left half in motion across. And it's complete, taken by Art Mock. Mock breaks away, 40, 35, and goes down yeah. at the 35-yard line. Leroy yeah. Irvin, the defender. Well, 34-yard gain. But here it is, third and 11. Joe has time to throw, and, and Monk is wide open. Look how open he is. Missed tackle. That key almost... Lucy Smith missed him, missed him again there. He almost broke it all away. He tripped over his own man as he tried to cut back. First and 10 at the Rams 35 yard line. Washington leading 13 7 and driving. Ron Riggins alone set back there. Play action. Bazman pumps, picks his screen line. Taken out there by Don Wallace. Tight end is rambling down near the 20 yard line before Jim Youngblood, the linebacker, makes the stop. Well, the Redskins seem to have, as you, you said it earlier, Lindsay, much more fire and emotion. They're moving the ball every series. They got the, the defense on defense. They're running the football, and that takes away the pass rush because you start worrying about stopping the run. They're mixing their screens in very cleverly, and he's got time to throw deep. So the Redskins offense looks like they're in control. Seisman is six for eight, 129 yards and one touchdown. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Riggins, two to the 18. It'll be second down and eight yards to go at the 18. George, you were head coach of both these teams. Must be a lot of ball players down there on that field that you brought to each one of them. Yeah, well, uh, about the only guy that left on the, on the Rams is, is the center, Saul. Right. And uh, we had him in 70. We talked about that. Then I... Uh, had one other player with the Redskins that I signed out of Canada named Joe Harris, number 51, who's captain of the Rams special team. And uh, he's a fine football player. He can play right here. So those are the only two on the, on the Rams. Mark in motion across Seismark. Going down to the corner, and it's in complete to tight end, Rick Walker. Well, Commerce covering. That Redskin offensive line is giving Joe time to throw. Now, he's, his strategy and play calling has helped for that time to throw. This is a crossing pattern. He, over, he overthrew him, but he was covered. There's about 12 players, I think, left on the Redskins, uh, Lindsay, from uh, my last year, 1977. Right. Third down, eight yards to go at the 18-yard line. Joe Washington's a long setback. Seismic. Jim puts it up, got him up. Couldn't hold on. Had it in his hands just for the moment. Beautiful throw by Joe. Lucius Smith covering. He read the blitz. They blitz, and that's what you want, a one-on-one. -on -one. That's what you work for all the time. Monk should have had that. Here it is. See Cromwell blitzing 21, up the gut. Now, now, Joe lays it in there with good touch. Should have been an easy score. We're going to give Mark Mosley a shot now, and this will be a 35-yard attempt with Joe Theismann holding from the hash mark left. And it's good for Mosley, 35 yards and three more points for the Washington Redskins. So the Redskins extend their lead now. They've got on that front by a score of 16 to 7, and we're in the second quarter. The drive was seven plays. Moses is going to kick it off. Drew Hill has dropped back deep. Washington came into this game having won six of their last eight, and they've got it rolling right here, leading by a score of 16 to 7. Going to be high and short. Hill at the 16 yard line to the 20, 25. 
pulled out about the 33-yard line by Malott, Rich Malott. Next Sunday now, the action really starts, and the NFL today starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time. The New York Giants and the Philadelphia yeah. Eagles at Philadelphia. That should be a heck of a game. The Eagles open the season in New York and beat them, and then the Giants come back and upset Philadelphia by a score of 10 to 7, something like that. That's one of those old line rivalries that's been rekindled now. Giants and Eagles. That's right. First five and ten yards to go. Ball's on the 33-yard line. Asterini up the middle. Incomplete. There's, there's the bomb. There's the bomb again. Bernard is the intended receiver. Ram fans are a little unhappy. Here's yeah. total offense. Look at well, that. You see, uh, <laughs> The, we, we've said this, the Redskins are playing with much more enthusiasm and energy to date than the Rams. And it's very, they're very fortunate they're not behind by more than that because Monk had a touchdown there, Lindsey, and he dropped that ball. Offensive plays, Washington's had 28 for 221 yards, and Los Angeles 16 for 42 yards. Pastorini getting his set back straight and out. Tyler's in the left set. Truman's in the right set. Tyler in motion. Pastorini. It's Denard, the intended receiver, and the move was made by Joe Lavender. Well, Joe, <laughs> Joe made a great play here. He got there, now watch this. Hook pattern in front of Lavender by Denard, pressure to Denard. Now watch Joe come up, knock the ball down with his, with his left hand. Fine defensive play. Third down, 10 yards to go for the Rams. Newman and Tyler, wing back in motion across. Pastorini, crossing Tyler, and it's taken out by Drew Hill, 45. Popped at the 49 yard line. Tony Peters. Uh, third and 10, they use motion, and Drew Hill comes underneath. Now the, now the Redskins are worrying about the deep pass, and Drew Hill just used his speed to pick up the first down. And he's really hit right here by Peters, 23. 16-yard pickup on the play. And back to an eye. It's to the tail back, Tyler. Down to the 45-yard line, Jerry Fight made the tackle. There's a red skin down in the field. Jerry Fight. Yeah, it looks like Jerry Fight. Bob Frederick said the officials take a time out to bring out members of the training staff to see about White, who's up and moving. Take a look at some scores now. Cincinnati 17, Atlanta uh, 7, second quarter. Yeah, what a... What a fall that Atlanta did this year. Didn't they, though? They started off, as we mentioned, three and all. And they're not just... Welcome back to the News Desk in New York. I'm Brent Musburger with Eric Cross. Irv, aren't you applied for the head coaching job of the Rams? Oh, wait a minute, please, Brent. <laughs> There are a number of capable people in the National Football League that can have that job, including Lionel Taylor, who's uh, currently there. See, I knew you'd come out and give our guy Lionel a big boost. Let me set the playoff picture for next Sunday, at least the wild card version. Here's what we know now. The Buffalo Bills and the New York Jets will start off the playoffs. And yes, that time is right, so that's like 9 o'clock out there along the Pacific Network. But the reason why they're going to start early is because of the uncertain weather conditions, especially in Chase Stadium, where that wind can gust and blow. Then, after the Bills and the Jets settle that game, it'll be on to Philadelphia for the Giants and the Eagles. And our coverage starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time or noon out there along the Pacific Network. Now, the winner of the Buffalo Jet game will meet the Cincinnati Bengals the following week. And either the San Diego Chargers or the Denver Broncos will go down to Miami. The winner of the Giants-Philadelphia game will go into San Francisco to play the 49ers. And it'll be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Dallas Cowboys for sure. Let's get you up to date with some of the scores around the league. The Eagles had absolutely no trouble at all with the Cardinals. The Cardinals might as well have phoned the rest of their season in. They gave no effort at all, and they were blown away 38 to nothing. And so Philly wins the home field advantage for the wild card game. 
And in a big game in Chicago Soldier Field, the Bears beat the Broncos 35-24. So the Broncos must wait. But it was also the last game for the great Alan Page. A part of the Chicago Bears and a part of the city of Chicago. Closed out his career with three and a half sacks, and his teammate Vince Evans went 19 yards here to Walter Payton, and the Bears led the Broncos 7-3, and here was Evans going again, Irv. This time, Ricky Watts hits him right in the chest for a 27-yard reception. Then he gave the ball to big Roland Harper. Pounded in for the score. It was 14-3. This really broke the back out of the Broncos. Gary Fensick, interception return rule number one. Pick off the ball, go to the near sideline, pick up a wall of blockers. Fensick does that. He goes 64 yards for a touchdown. And it means now that the Broncos are completely out of the playoff picture if the Chargers beat the Oakland Raiders tomorrow night. The only way the Broncos can go to the playoffs would be for the Raiders to beat the Chargers. I'll tell you, Al Davis will go out and play that one himself. He really does not like Gene Klein, the owner of the San Diego Chargers, that well. So that could be some confrontation tomorrow night out on the West Coast. And Kansas City and Minnesota right now. It is 10-6. The Chiefs downing the Vikings, and that was Minnesota's last game. Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington. They'll move downtown Minneapolis. They'll go in under a dome next year. The San Francisco 49ers, they wind up with the best overall record in the National Football League in the regular season, 21-17. They struck first here on this touchdown pass to Charlie Young, who busted into the end zone. But what a day, Irv, for this young man. Boy, George Rogers set a rushing record as a rookie and also leads the league now in rushing. Here at another play on a toss, goes two yards to another touchdown. Great day. Joe Montana on a great play fake. Went up to Freddie Solomon for another touchdown. And then Johnny Davis put it away. And Irv, as we look ahead now to the playoffs, uh, which two teams do you like to go all the way to the Super Bowl? I tell you, the home field advantage is so important in the playoff series. The 49ers playing at Candlestick have a decided advantage. The very soft, muddy field. People like Dorsett and Montgomery will have a difficult time on that surface. Oh, I like San Francisco. That okay. team is aw That field is awful for both teams. Well, yeah, you but know that. They, they're, they're, they're back to kind of plotters. It's, it's made for them. How about a New York Jets San Francisco Super Bowl? Well, it could happen. Okay. Why not? The NFL today will continue with more scores and highlights right after these messages from your local station. Just when they're on the brink of winning the Marcus Allen Bowl, the Baltimore Colts blow it. They win today. They beat the Patriots 23-21. Now they don't even wind up with the top draft choice. That goes to New England. Tampa Bay and Detroit, what a shootout. 2017, the Buccaneers over the Lions. And I'll tell you, the Buccaneers have the most devastating pass-catch combination in the league. Williams to house. Kevin, what was the game plan today against the Lions? Well, we felt we could get uh, some sharp passes, but they uh, began squatting on the sharp passes, so we uh, got that long one, and that helped a lot. And uh, offensively, we thought we could run on them, and we did. It was a tough defensive game, too. Leroy Selman jarring the ball loose. And then watch Eric Hipple get into the end zone from nine yards out. And the Lions were in command, except they're across for this interception. Had things going, Brent, but Cedric Brown steps in here, kicks off the ball, hit, fumbles, and house went long. Well, it was a simple curl and go pattern. They uh, were squatting on the uh, curls, and we uh, figured we could run by them, and we tried it one time, and it worked. And boy, did it work this time. 84 yards for a touchdown for Kevin House. It put the Buccaneers in charge of the Lions. They turned the defense loose. Selman battling again, blindsiding Hipple, scooped up by David Logan. He dashed on into the end zone. But the Lions were not finished. They kept on coming back, and they might even have pulled it out, except watch this. Freddie Scott blows it, and Cedric Brown has his second interception. And now, Kevin, what about the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I haven't seen too much of them on film, but uh, you can believe me, we'll be ready. I believe it. They'll be ready, Irv. 2017, the Buccaneers win the NFC Central, and the Lions lose for the first time at home this year. The other big game, of course, the New York Jets in Shea Stadium over the Green Bay Packers, 28-3. Mark Gastineau was one of the ringleaders, and Mark, you guys really went out after Lynn Dickey and the Packers this afternoon. 
Well, we knew we had to get to Dickey because uh, Green Bay's got some of the best receivers in the NFL. And uh, Jefferson and Lofton, you can't speak enough about. They got to him a total of nine times. Dickey just could not get the pack attack going. And Gastineau had the Shea Stadium crowd roaring from beginning to end. Bruce Harper pounding in from three yards, and then it was the long arm of Richard Todd. First, he went to Lamb Jones, who had his best game ever as a Jet. Then, late in the going, it was Wesley Walker, who burned the Packers. And thus, the Jets and the Giants go to the playoffs. And Greg Buttle, of course, now this will be the third game between you and the Buffalo Bills. What about that Bill team? Buffalo's a good football team, there's no doubt about it. Uh, they were coming off, I think, winning four in a row until they lost to Miami, but I'm just glad we have to play Buffalo here in New York instead of up in Buffalo. The home field advantage you spoke about means so much now that the playoffs are here and the Jets are in. Let me quickly go through the other games that are still in progress. We have no finals on. Atlanta and Cincinnati. Cincinnati leading Atlanta 27-21 at the half of that game. Seattle all over Cleveland, 28-7 at the half there. And Houston leading Pittsburgh 14-6. And, of course, the game you are watching here on CBS, the Washington Redskins ahead of the Los Angeles Rams, 16-7. And the NFL today continues on CBS in just a moment. execution diamond and see the way the way joe threw the ball it's either incomplete or a touchdown play action off a of motion takes to joe washington and watch him lay the ball up perry's beaten made him reach for it beautiful execution conversion attempt coming down mark mosley will attempt diamond holding and it is good so the Washington Redskins here in the closing seconds of the third quarter. Stand to be just about putting it away, and they lead by a score of 30 to 7. It's a happy sideline. Joe Thosman facing there. He's had quite a performance here this afternoon. Yeah, he sure has, Lindsay. If, if the Redskins played like this, like this all year, they'd, they'd be in the playoffs. No question about it. They're, they're a hot team right now. Joel Thomas is the deep man back there now. Takes it two yards deep in the end zone. Will not run it out. Not run it out. Six inches from the goal line. Stay right there. It's a touchback. And it is. And he does. First and ten at the 20-yard line. Now next Sunday. The NFL today starts at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And it'll be the New York Giants yeah. and the Philadelphia Eagles. Lindsay, that's two defensive teams. The Giants have been winning on defense. And the Eagles have been winning on defense. They've had trouble with their offense. So that should be a heck of a defensive game. A low-scoring game. All right, there comes Kemp back in to run the attack. First and ten at the 20-yard line. Thomas and Gooman are the setback. Tyler is not in there at the moment. Gooman moves it out there to the 27-yard line before Mark Murphy brings him down. It'll be second down and three yards to go. Clock is running with 12 seconds left in the third quarter. Well, see what the Rams do on this particular drive. Otherwise, there's reason to believe that their season may have ended about 15 minutes ago. That's the end of the third quarter. With a score, Washington 30, Los Angeles 7. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter after this word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Subaru inexpensive and built to stay that way. Radio Shack, a division of Handy Corporation. And by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. This is Lindsey Nelson with George Allen in Anaheim as we start the fourth quarter. Now watching the Leeds Los Angeles 30 to 7, second and three for the round. They're on 27 yard line. This is Thomas Gang. Got it out there for the first and ten. 
Mike right. uh, Murphy made the stop. Well, he fumbled, but the, the whistle blew. Uh, this is what they have to do. They can't put in a a, a young guy like Jeff Kemp and think he can get you back in the ball game because uh, it puts too much pressure on him. Redskins have made 437 yards to the to the Los Angeles 163. That, that's how they dominate this ball game. They've done all of that. They lead it by 437. Quick pitch, taken by Gooman. Powers out to the 40 yard line. Dexter Manley made the stop. Gain of three, second and seven. Another thing the Redskins have done, their average on first and 10 is 14.4. That's how they've dominated first and 10. That is domination. Jeff Moore and Willie Miller and that wide receivers now for the rounds as they go down deep from the depth chart. This time in the fourth quarter of the last game of the season. Jeff plays it on the ground to Thomas again. He bounces on the on the far side and finally drives down for a loss. That's the Manley. A lot of money coming. Okay, now here's the finals. Boy. Chicago Bears 35, Denver 24. And what an upset that was. And, and Dan Reeves must be sick tonight. All they had to do was win that ball game. Now the Bears, I believe, are 4-0 against AFC West teams. And we have to wait till Monday night to find out about San Diego and Oakland. And that puts, that Jets win puts the Giants in, knocks Green Bay out. Also puts the Jets in. Right. Third and 11 on the 36th. Jeff Kemp. Well, that one sort of squirreled out there. Three quarters of the way. Drew Hill, I think, was the intended receiver as the Kemp rubs his arm. Hunting unit comes on. Mike Nelms is dropping back for Washington, standing along his own 21-yard line. Mike Carell does most of the punting in the place, but work for the Ram as Nelm. And that's a, that's a big plus because it allows you to carry one more full-time player. What's the kicker's union have to say about that? Uh, now the punt. Nelm at the sideline goes out of bounds. No return just across the 20. 42-yard punt, no return. So when players resume, they will start Washington first and 10 across the 25-yard line. Tom Flick is the quarterback in the ballgame now, the rookie from Washington, relieving Joe Theismann, who had a fantastic afternoon here. First and 10 at the 20-yard line for the Redskins, who lead in the game 30 to 7. Well, that's the thing to do. You got the game one and give your young quarterback some experience for next year. Now the cross here, Clint throws the setback and he has the ball. Takes the full spin, drives it out to 5 to the 25. Jim Youngblood made the stop. Second and 5. Well, we said early in the ball game, Lindsay, the Rams didn't seem to have much emotion, even in the, in the first quarter. Joe Theismann, right there. There are his stats for the day. On the basis of his performance this afternoon and this season, you'd have to say he's developed into a real frontline, headline quarterback in the NFL. Yes, he has. And he should have had another touchdown pass once left. Quinto. Those was short of the first, knocked about two feet, Carl Eckert made the tackle. The reason this is good for Tom Flick, unlike Jeff Kemp, is that uh, he can run the football, play it safe, and throw in a running situation. Kansas City 10, Minnesota 6, final score. Minnesota sort of fell off in the they did. Half. They had a two-game lead in that Central Division and blew it. I think they've lost five straight now. Their offense has gone down. And the Philadelphia Eagles shut out St. Louis 38 to nothing. That's the final. That's their first win in five weeks. Okay, Flick brings them up. Mock and motion. Flickin. Out there to the 32-yard line. Manning made the tackle. 
All right, Tampa Bay wins the Central Division yeah. crown in the NFC by beating Detroit 20 to 17. Detroit's first loss to, at home, and the other thing is Tampa lost to Heartbreaker last week to San Diego. Didn't they though? So that, that shows some character to come back. Oh, Baltimore won. Baltimore won. New England gets the first draft choice. 23 to 21 is the final. They had lost, I think they had lost 15 straight or 14 straight. A lot. Walker in motion across, Flick dropping back. Nope. Ricky Thompson was the man for whom it was intended. Nolan Cromwell covering. Second and 10 on the 33. And San Francisco got home field advantage up to and through the championship game if they were in it in the NFC. 21-17 final. Lindsay, I think the Saints won four games this year and two of them were from the Rams. They were, you're yeah. right. And that's what killed their season. Seattle oh. in the fourth quarter is leading Cleveland 42 to 14. Whatever happened to Cleveland? The front goes the lone setback. Draw play. The front Backed up by Avery Sully. Now well, to 33. Another ex, uh, well, there, Pittsburgh coming back. 20, yes. 20 to 14. Third quarter. Yeah. And Cincinnati in the third quarter is leading Atlanta 27 to 21. Cincinnati already has clinched, of course, Central Division of the AFC. Another guy sitting up here in the booth used to be where the Redskins is Paul Lanham sitting up there next to us, who's the quarterback coach of the Rams. Now they pass the Rainey. It was relieved by Kemp. That's the way he played most of the ball game. Still Washington now set back third and ten on the 33. Oh, my, Chiquinto. First and ten. At the 41-yard line, Nolan Cromwell, the defender. Well, that, that play's been open most of the day. It's uh, the halfback run, the seam pattern. Picked up 26 yards. Here it is. They did the same thing with uh, Metcalf earlier. Nice pass, wide open, first down, picked up 26 yards. Redskins now with the ball in Ram territory. Nine minutes, 17 seconds left to play in this game. Here's Quento, two receptions, 29 yards. Here's from the University of Connecticut, second year. Here's Quento. Joe Harris made the stop at the 37-yard line. And a four makes it second and six. Redskins leading by a score of 30 to seven and driving here in the fourth quarter. Quarterback Tom Flick, a rookie from the University of Washington. Uh-oh, 41-yard line, Carl Ecker. Third and ten. I know at about this time you're getting your football calendar straightened out, so be sure and mark down next Sunday. Next Sunday, the NFL today starts at 3 p.m. Eastern, then the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's in Philadelphia. You know, an interesting thing there, when you beat a team, uh, Philadelphia had beaten the Giants, oh, something like 10 or 12 in a row. The Giants beat them the second half of the season. So the Giants will have confidence they can beat them again. Third down. Ten yards to go. Flick. Incomplete. Ricky Thompson. Good pass right in his hand. Fourth and ten. Flick showed some mobility. Rolling out here. Mike Connell comes on to the punting. Here's the ground level shot. Flick going back to pass. Now he rolls out. Partial rollout. Continues all the way. Ball should should have been completed. So watch this. Caught it in his forearms, not in his, not in his hands. Dropped the ball. Final way to go to the snap. Leroy Irvin is deep, standing inside his own 10 yard line to receive it for the round. Aaron is going for the fair catch and letting it go. 
foot can be downed, and it is simply downed, and will be taken by the Rams, first and 10, at the six yard line, a 36 yard punt. And the lot was down there to down the ball for 30 to seven in the fourth quarter. I don't know whether that's put up there by Redskin fan or a disenchanted Rams fan. Yeah. First and 10 to six yard line. Thomas and Zuman have a setback. Kelp on the end zone. Now he starts to run it out. All down from behind by Perry Brooks, 260 yeah. pounder at the 14 yard line. You see how quick Perry Brooks was on that? He rushed the passer, came back and made the tackle on Kemp from behind. He's a real athlete. This guy has, now watch, watch Perry Brooks. Now here Kemp setting up. Now he steps up. Now watch 69 come from behind him. Flick him down. Second down and two yards to go. Jump, short drop. Uh, that is Jeff Moore. Hit immediately as he took the ball. Jerry White had to hit, but it's the first and ten. When I was at Whittier College, his dad was the quarterback. Jack Kemp was the quarterback at Oxford. If he's got the determination that his dad had, he's got a heck of a future. And it Congress. looks like looks like he's got the strong arm. First and ten. It's at the 19 yard line. Jump. Jump. He held the ball a little too long there. Lawrence and Manley thought a sandwich thing. Actually, that's what uh, Mark Wilson's going through with uh, Oakland. With Oakland, he holds the ball just a little bit too long, and he gets sacked. Here's Kemp going back. He has pretty good protection here. Now he steps around, he's still holding. Of course, I'd rather have him do that than put it up for grabs. We want that, 82. Yeah. Bergamo. Second and 13 at the 16-yard line. Thomas crossed the 20 to the 21-yard line. Monty Coleman made the tackle. And a five. It'll be third and eight. There are a lot of Redskin fans in Charlottesville, Virginia, and Albemarle County. Lindsay, we want to say hello to them. They're real fans down there. A lot of Ram fans who were here at the start of the game who are now at home. We'd like to say hello to them. A lot of empty, empty seats. Third down and eight yards to go. You see now the fans here down the house. Jeff Kemp. And it is complete to Jeff Moore at the 40-yard line. Nice throw by Jeff Kemp. He was hit just as he released the ball. A delivery sack on Kemp, and he stayed right with it. Here, let's see it. He threw a strike. Here he is setting up. Now watch him get hit just as he releases the ball. Right there. He stayed right with it. Good catch by Moore. First yep. and ten. Jeff Moore. At the 40-yard line for the Rams. Five minutes, five seconds left to play in the game and in the season for these two teams. Penalty mark at the line of scrimmage. It is Bill back up. Yeah. Drew Hill. Drew Hill's head was on a swivel. If you if you watch his head, you'd see why he missed it. He was looking around. Didn't look the ball into his hands. Bob uh, Frederick is getting the report from his staff of officials on the field. And they want to offer an opinion. In Washington, after every victory, a guy named Duke Siebert would come out to Redskin Park with a big cake with a score on it. The offensive team was offside, and the defensive team was offside. Offset, we'll replay the down, first down. Seems fair enough. Here's the replay. No question about it. Perry Brooks was offside. Look at his head. His head's moving around. He was trying to run with the ball. First and 10 at the 40 yard line. Jeff Kemp. 
intended for Jeff Moore. Very slight covering. Had him open, just overthrew him. Good protection there. And Duke, Duke would come out with that cake, and he'd always have something on. Maybe he'd have a picture of Starbuck for next week's game, Roger Starbuck. And then we'd cut that cake and put a knife in Starbuck's arm, you see? <laughs> that type of a thing. <laughs> Second out and 10 yards to go at the 40. Yep. From behind once again, and it's Dallas Hickman. Well, see. Tonight on CBS starts with 60 minutes. Then it's Archie Bunker's play, followed by one day at a time, Alice, the Jeffersons and Trapper John M.D. It's all tonight on CBS. The Redskins let Dallas Hickman go and then brought him back. It's a smart move because he, he's a good special team man. He can rush the passer. He can play two or three positions. You need people like that. Rams have not done so very well on third down. It's not third and eight. Two Hill. Safety blitz right in his face. When you said they haven't done well on third down conversion, Lindsay, if you have a, a lot of long yardage situations, it's difficult to pick them up. If you're third and one, third and two, third and three, that's something else. Well, if you're third and 14, third and 15. You're exactly right. That means you haven't done too well on second and first down either. Mike Nelms is stopping back there now to receive the punt. Frank Corral is going to do the punting. No, at the six yard line. He's at the 10, the 15, the 17. It'll be first and 10, a 52 yard punt returned 11 yards, and the tackle was made by Kirk Collins when players resume. First and 10 for the Redskins at the 17 yard line. Ray Malavese, the head coach of the Los Angeles Rams. Washington has the ball now, first and 10 at the 17 yard line. Jacinto, penalty mark is strong. Well, he goes out of bounds as he crossed the 25 yard line. Lucius Smith ran him out over there, but there's a marker to be checked out. While we're checking this out, George Allen, you were a head coach for a long time. You were a head coach of both these teams. The season is ending now, and you've got to think about next year. What do you think these teams will turn their direction to in the way of the drought? Well, if I were the Rams, I think the big thing they have to do is get set on their quarterback position. Legal formation, the offense. That's, uh, that's the key to your offense, and you can't be... I said this uh, for the L.A. Times uh, in the week in an interview, that you can't be changing your lineup continually. I like to have a set lineup on offense, set lineup de on defense and special teams. So they need to decide who's their quarterback and stay with them. That's Muck, number 81. Lucius Smith is the man who's injured and getting attention yeah. out there. That is. That's George Menifee, the trainer on the right, who's been with the Rams. That's Phil Murphy. Phil Murphy is who it is. It is Phil Murphy. So when play is resumed now, Ball will be placed back there at the 11-yard line, and Washington leads 30 to 7. Phil Murphy was the man that did he left under his own power walk, coming to 300 pounds. Three minutes, 47 seconds left to play in the game. First and 15 at the 11-yard line. Flick is the quarterback. Giacuento, penalty marker on the play. Right. <laughs> I think the Rams were offside. Right defensive tackle looked like he was across. That last one is your point. And Kirschman. Gary Bergman is the headlinesman. Bob Cobb was the man involved. So Flick is coming up to exercise the Rams option. Or rather the Washington option. Encroachment, 
Number 97 on the defense. First down. Pop cop. Not many left here to watch the season wind down to its inevitable close in Anaheim, California. Less than 10 to 16. Jaquinto. Out to the 21-yard line before Bob Cobb brings him down. Gain of five. Second and five. Rams came into this game with a record of six wins and nine losses. The uh, Redskins, what they have to do is start where they left off. Just keep going like they are. They start fast. Like the way they finish, they'll be in the playoffs. Joe Gibbs, the head coach of the Redskins. and a half short of the first down at the 25. Leroy Irvin made the stop. 251. Lindsay, uh, we'd like to say hello to Mrs. Harold McClinton. You remember Harold McClinton? Yes, I do. Fine middle linebacker and her family, and we send them a Merry Christmas. They're back in Washington watching this game. Cincinnati 30, Atlanta 21 in the fourth quarter. Uh, Ray Owens and <coughs> Ray Shonky have set up a plus one for the kids there and they're to be congratulated on the effort they are to raise money for a scholarship for the two sons. Here comes the last one. 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 Out there at the 34-yard line, Kirk Collins made the tackle. We're getting down to the Automatic timeout that comes at the two-minute warning. So we have arrived there, and when play is resumed after the two-minute warning, it'll be first and ten for Washington at their own 34. It's a happy time for the Redskins fans here in Anaheim, California. Redskins are leading at 30 to 7 with two minutes left to play. This is Lindsey Nelson with George Allen. There's a total look at, offense. Look at that. They're going to make well over 500 before it's over. They took control from the beginning. They scored the first three in the ball game. First and ten at the 35-yard line. Giaquinto's the lone setback. Six to four to back. Giaquinto broke a tackle and kept driving. Got up there close to the six as Mel Owens made the stop for the Los Angeles Rams. This is now the most yards allowed by the Los Angeles Rams this season. 503. Previous was 496 for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, they, they were last on rushing defense before this game started, so they'll certainly remain there. Somebody go looking at the Cincinnati Atlanta, of course, Cincinnati leading. Cincinnati, of course, needs a victory to clinch the AFC home field advantage. Chiaquinto is the long setback. Art Muck in motion across. Chiaquinto. He's getting a lot of work. He's getting the ball. He's getting a first down at the 48-yard line. Mike Fanning made the tackle. He's showing some quickness. That's what uh, I've always looked for in the back more than speed. Uh, you like to have speed and quickness. Larry Brown had speed and quickness. One minute left to play in this game. Apparently the season's over for Wendell Tyler, who gained 1,074 yards for the season. Another group I'd like to say hello to, Lindsay, is all those over-the-hill gang back in Washington. <laughs> what a great gang they were. So much character and dedication, and that's why we had the success we had. Go gift. Got to be pleased with the performance of the Redskins here this afternoon. Ricky Clapp is the lone setback now. 32 seconds on the clock. Ricky Clapp has it to the 47-yard line. Carl Eckert can make the tackle. So now we're down to 23 seconds. Executive producer is Terry O'Neill. Senior producer is Charles A. Smilton III. Produced by John Ferretton. And our director is John McDonough. These are all the fine people whose work made this telecast as enjoyable as it was here this afternoon. They're not going to snap the ball. Nobody's going to take time out. They're going to mercifully let the season end with the clock running without snapping the football. And time has run out, and the season is over. As the Washington Redskins have finished with an even 500, that's Joe Gibbs. He's won eight. He's lost eight. 500. And the Los Angeles Rams have finished with a record of six wins and ten losses. Some final thoughts, George Allen. 
Well, the Redskins came to play. They were enthusiastic from the opening series, the warm-up, they were ready to play. The Rams came out kind of straggling. Maybe it's because of the Monday night game. There was never any doubt in my mind who was going to win this football game. Joe Seinfeld had a fine afternoon at quarterback for the Washington Redskins. The future is next year, say the Ram fans. Kemp and Seinfeld are talking it over at season's close. Once again, the final score, Washington 30, Los Angeles 7, Lindsey Nelson with George Allen. Let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, welcome back to New York. I'm Brent Musburger with Irv Cross and Jimmy the Greek, who we have brought in here to kind of wrap up the playoff picture because, of course, the wild card showdowns are next Sunday. Game one, the New York Jets in Shea Stadium will host the Buffalo Bills. And then, of course, the scene will shift to Philadelphia here on CBS and we'll have the New York Giants against the Philadelphia Eagles. This is the first time since the wild card situation began in the National Football League that both teams, and actually in both conferences, are out of the same division. The Bills and the Jets in the AFC East, the Giants and the Eagles from the NFC East. And Jimmy, in the jet Bill game, who are our favorite be there? The Jets by a home field advantage and nothing more. How about now the Giants and the Eagles in that second game? Well, the Eagles are at home, too, and they'll be a slight favorite maybe you know what they say on the golf course four something wait but but Irv cross over here says they're going to win that by two or three touchdowns well, he's dreaming that, again of course, that, that's my heart talking you know that <laughs> well how about a situation with the eagles and the giants they've split on the regular season and uh, Irv, will the eagles remember that licking they took from the giants the last no time no doubt about it you know brent uh, the eagles historically is particularly since vermeil has come there as head coach has played exceptionally well the second time around with any opponent they were embarrassed when the Giants beat them down there. They felt badly about it. They felt that they could win the division championship. The Giant loss knocked them out of it. So it's a revenge game in Philadelphia. Just don't worry about it, young man. The Giants will show up. <laughs> okay, I know they'll be there. <laughs> you were down doing your homework, and you were paying very careful attention to the Washington Redskins. You and I have talked about this great comeback. How good are the skins right now as compared to the rest of the NFL? They would be rated right under Dallas and San Francisco like maybe a field goal list or so. All right. Jimmy, we've got a lot of scores, a lot of highlights, and we'll see who the Greek likes to go to the Super Bowl now in Pontiac, Michigan, as the NFL Today continues on CBS in just a moment. Earlier today in Philadelphia, the Eagles rolled over the St. Louis Cardinals 38 to nothing. Big sigh of relief by Eagle coach Dick Vermeil because his team scored in the second half for the first time in five weeks. And here goes Ron Jaworski now to Charlie Smith for a touchdown that put the Eagles ahead. And then it was Wilbert Montgomery. Oh. He's healthy and going full bore. He's the best friend. Double spin touchdown. Jaworski here lost in a pass high to Harold Carmichael. Six more for the Eagles. I made it 28-0. And then uh, had a little scuffle break out. Or <laughs> what was that kicking going on out there? Well, if you can't win the game, you start a fight again, right? Yes, you're absolutely right.